Good morning. Allow me to greet each of you personally. Honorable Director General of Forest Research Development and Innovation Agency, Honorable Head of Indonesia Wood Research Society, MAPEKI, Honorable Keynote Speakers and Research Professors, Honorable Directors of Agencies under the Ministry of Environment and Forestry, Honorable Head of Research Institutes, and I would like to also greet all researchers here, university academic and research student, and also our moderator, Frida Lidwina. How do you do, everyone? A very beautiful morning to all of you. I'm feeling grateful to God of all creation, for by His grace, we are able to get together today to hold the online seminar. I am Rossi Tampu Bolon. I will act as the master of ceremony, and on behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, the ever-increasing number of world population have put much pressure to forest environment. Now, how is exactly science, and in particular, forest science, would provide answer to the problem? It seems like there's not much left option to do other than innovation. Now, here in the third International Conference of Forest Product 2020, we invite all of you to join us in the discussion that we hope will bring range of options, range of ideas, and range of innovations to help solve the problem. This year, ICFP taking on the special thematic of the 12th International Symposium of Indonesia Wood Research Society, or IWARS, and we are focusing on the topic of forest product processing innovations and sustainable forest and environment management. Now, some of you probably just can't wait to dig in into the discussion, but you just have to hold on because we have to open our day by singing the national anthem, Indonesia Raya. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to brief you the outline agenda for today's seminar. Now, in this today's seminar, we have two sessions in our main agenda. The first one will be the plenary session. In this session, you will be delivered with four interesting topics that will be presented by four keynote speakers. And following after this session is the parallel session when all of you can be included in a more in-depth discussion of your topic of preference. Now, that is our agenda for today. And now, to officially welcome you, I would like to invite the Acting Directors of Forest Product Research and Development Center, who is also the event's chairman of the committee, Dr. Wening Wulandari. Dr. Wening, time and place are yours. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. 
Your Excellencies, Director General of Research, Development and Innovation Agency, Head of Indonesian Wood Research Society, keynote speakers, and all of distinguished guests and participants. Let us always be grateful to God who always asks to have the opportunity to attend the International Conference on Forest Products 2020 today. First of all, I would like to convey my gratitude to all of you participants and keynote speakers for your attendance. Welcome to the conference. The International Conference on Forest Product 2020 is the third international conference organized by Forest Product Research and Development Center. The conference this time is very special because it is held virtually during the COVID-19 pandemic which has not ended. Besides, it also raises the thematic series of the International Symposium of IWARS, Indonesian Wood Research Society. This is a strategic step to develop a research network between forest product processing with the other aspect in forest resources and environment management. The theme of the international conference is forest product processing innovation for communities and sustainable forest and environment management, which is a strategic theme to encourage the role of science and technology in commercialization and to increase the wide application and provide optimal benefit for the community. This international conference today is expected to be a medium for researchers, scientists, and all stakeholders from various research institutes and universities to exchange information and experiences as well as develop research and development collaboration and synergy. Distinguished guests and participants, the international conference today is attended by more than 400 participants and invitees. In this conference, we will get to share information about developments in science and technology in forest product processing with speakers from Indonesia, Japan, and Korea. Thank you for your willingness to be a speaker on this occasion. There are 75 local and international presenters from various institutions who will present outstanding science and technology information related to the team. This is the highest number of papers that were presented from the three times of IC. FP was held. Thank you for this trust in us. These papers will be published on IOP publishing series, which is indexing by Scopus. We hope the research results that are presented today will become a benchmark for research and development in the future, and also can be the modalities to develop research and development collaboration. Once again, thank you for joining this conference. Stay, he stay healthy and stay safe. With all respect, Director General of Research, Development and Innovation Agency, Bapak Dr. Agus Dusianto, please give us the honor to have you formally open the International Conference of Forest Product 2020 today. Thank you for your kind attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Dr. Wening. Now that is Dr. Wening with an official welcoming statement. And now to officially open the International Conference of Forest Product, I would like to invite the Director General of Forest Research Development and Innovation Agency, Dr. Agus Justianto. Dr. Justianto, time and place are yours. Thank you very much. Uh, distinguished uh, director, Directors of Agencies under the Ministry of Environment and Forestry, Head of Indonesian Wood Research uh, Society, Mapeki, uh, a speaker from Indonesia, Japan, Korea, research professors, head of research institute, researchers, uh, university academics, research students, distinguished guests, and participants. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good morning for all of you. Let us always thank God, uh, which allow us to have the opportunity and good help to attend the International Conference on Forest Products 2020 today. Holding International Conference is a strategic event for research institutions. It is a breakthrough and important step to disseminate science, technology, and innovation results 
as well as a great opportunity to develop research and development international network. The international conference is also an excellent event for scientists to explore information, exchanging experiences, and build a network in R&D, which is in turn will take us to higher achievement in supporting the development of environment and forestry science and technology in Indonesia and internationally. I am grateful to the many experts who have come to share their knowledge today. It is a valuable opportunity for me to be able to meet scientists, experts, students from various institutions and fields of expertise, distinguished guests and participants. The theme of today's international conference Forest Products Processing Innovation for Communities and Sustainable Forest and Environment Management. In today's era, forest product processing requires a reliable technology to produce a high quality result, resource efficient, have a good market prospect and highly beneficial for communities. The last factor is the important one that the science and technologies of forest products must be beneficial to people, especially in the state of COVID-19 pandemic. Wood and non-wood forest products have to be managed with the right technology in order to give added value and sustainable benefit. It is therefore, we are inviting the qualified keynote speakers in today's international conference. In particular, I thank you for the willingness and presence of Professor Nam Hun Kim, Professor Kenji Umemura, and Dr. Jamaluddin Malik for sharing information and their experience in the best practices for, of forest product processes. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, science, technology, and innovation are important factors in policy making. In this case, the role of researcher and scientists in general is very strategic by providing policy recommendations based on science, technology, and innovation. I'm sure that today's discussion are coming from selected science and technology, which will be further implemented. There are 75 research results that will be presented today. This is a very valuable opportunity to be able to find out the status of the achievement of the development of science and technology. The synergy of research institutions and academics in producing science and technology innovation will be a positive step in developing knowledge. Everyone that holds a pool of knowledge will complete its other to create a comprehensive work piece. I'm convinced that researchers and academics in the Indonesian Wood Research Society have started this at a national level. Through today's uh, international conference, I expect the emerging of stronger and more developed research collaboration and synergy at the international level. Distinguished guests and participants, once again, welcome all participants. I'm sure you will have fruitful and rewarding exchanges today. We thank you for attending today's conference. Even though it is virtual, it will not reduce the benefits we will get from this conference. I wish you every success with this important conference, and I look forward to learning about the outcomes. I hope today's international conference could provide valuable benefits and information for the development of science technology, and innovation of forest products in the future. By saying Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, the International Conference on Forest Products 2020 on 1st September 2020 is officially open. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now about to move into our main agenda, which is the plenary session. But before that, allow me to introduce you to Ms. Frida Lidwina. Ms. Lidwina is the professional news anchor at CNN Indonesia News Agency, and we are very lucky to have her here with us to be the moderator for today's seminar. Hello, Frida. Hello, uh, Rosie.
Sophie, how are you? Okay, Frida, uh, we are learning that you are joining uh, with us from your place at Jakarta. I wonder, how is the capital city lately? It actually has been really hot, but luckily today it's not that hot. But um, I'm here in the convenience of my own home, so looking forward uh, to this uh, international conference on forest products. Okay. Now, Frida, you probably have learned several things about the Forest Product Research and Development Center. Some of our participants probably don't get too familiar with the agency yet. What do you think if we show them some kind of video to keep them updated of what have been happening lately on the agency? I think it's a brilliant idea. So let's go. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here's the video that we have prepared for you. Hope you enjoy. Pusat penelitian dan pengembangan hasil hutan. Forest Products Research and Development Center hadir dengan branding for pro More than technology. For pro telah berkiprah lebih dari satu abad. Sebuah perjalanan panjang dan usia yang mencerminkan maturitas lembaga dan kompetensi sebagai lembaga litbang unggul. Keunggulan Forpro diakui oleh banyak pihak yang berujung dengan penetapan sebagai pusat unggulan IPTEC dalam pemanfaatan hasil hutan tropis. Forpro berkiprah dengan bukti melalui ratusan IPTEC dan inovasi membanggakan yang telah dihasilkan. IPTEC dan inovasi bidang pengolahan hasil hutan telah menjadi branding lembaga yang sudah menjadi referensi bagi masyarakat dalam pengelolaan sumber daya hutan dan lingkungan. Ragam laboratorium yang telah terakreditasi ISO 17025-2017 dan bisnis proses yang dijalankan dengan akreditasi KNAP 02-2017 menjadikan Forpro sebagai idola tempat belajar dan berkonsultasi bagi pemangku kepentingan. Dukungan para pihak telah mendorong Forpro menghasilkan inovasi dan rekayasa mesin yang komprehensif dan mengembangkan laboratorium rujukan pengolahan limbah batang sawit. Iptek pengolahan limbah batang sawit menjadi produk perkayuan yang ramah lingkungan, mampu mematahkan keraguan ketiadaan kayu alternatif untuk memenuhi kebutuhan industri kayu. Forpro juga menggarap potensi lain dari hutan, yaitu limbah dan hasil hutan bukan kayu. Sentuhan IPTEC for Pro mampu mengubah limbah menjadi rupiah. Aplikasi IPTEC Aram Terpadu oleh masyarakat tidak terhitung lagi jumlahnya. Sebuah capaian tidak ternilai dan sangat berharga bagi Forpro. Invensi yang dihasilkan mampu memberikan manfaat luar biasa bagi publik. 
Forpro terus berinovasi mengembangkan teknologi manufacture super heating reaktor dan menggandeng mitra industri untuk komersialisasi. Silarium Bogoriense sudah tidak asing lagi di telinga kita. Sebuah capaian fenomenal menjadi silarium terbesar di dunia dengan lebih dari 200.000 spesimen kayu. Silarium Bogoriense menjadi sumber data utama pengembangan Aiko KLHK. Sebuah sistem hmm. yang mampu mengenali kayu dalam hitungan detik. Pemanenan kayu yang menyisakan seminimal mungkin limbah menjadi fokus dalam pengelolaan sumber daya hutan. Iptek pemanenan kayu dan rekayasa peralatan yang dikembangkan Forpro telah memberikan kesejukan bagi para pelaku usaha untuk dapat memanfaatkan sumber daya yang dikelola secara optimal. Hmm. Ya, yeah, I think we have uh, seen the video on Four Pro and uh, now we have a very very good idea of what four pro is and what it is doing uh, for us well first of all i would like to say hello to everyone selamat pagi i'm so happy to be here this morning and meeting all uh, the speakers and all participants through this wonderful technology right from home in uh, jakarta and talking about uh, technology and thanks to can share and access a whole lot of information to and from a whole lot of people everywhere, well, through the internet, especially social medias. Um, talking about social media, some people uh, ask, if a tree falls in the forest and it isn't posted on Facebook or Instagram or it really happened, well, to be honest, there are not enough uh, people interested in what's happening to our forests and the trees in it, and therefore there probably isn't that many news on forests being covered by media and the internet. Well, I myself would have never typed the key forest if it isn't for this uh, conference. I'm sorry, but I'm just being honest, forests are so valuable to us, but it is lacking so much attention, and we actually need to expose um, and educate more and more people about uh, forests and its products. They are essential to our life and they should be used responsibly to ensure sustainability and also in uh, balance so that they are not endangered yet can generate uh, income and uh, economic values to people. That's why conferences like this is important to us and I'm so happy and honored uh, to be part of it. In the first session of the ICFP 2020 today, um, I will remind you that there will be three speakers who are joining from uh, Japan, South Korea, and of course Indonesia, who will share with us the latest strategies um, and developments. But before we go into uh, the three speakers, we are honored to have Dr. Uh, Insignor Agus Justianto, MSc. Um, he's the Director General of Research, Development and Innovation uh, Agency from the Ministry of Environment and Forestry. Um, uh, Pak Agus will deliver the keynote speech for today, and he has been part of the Indonesian uh, delegation in many international conferences and seminars, both uh, as speaker and as representative. Uh, Pak Agus also has an extensive experience and knowledge on forestry programs as uh, he has been over 30 years working with the Indonesian Ministry um, of Forestry. Uh, Pak Agus, uh, good morning. Good morning. Selamat pagi, ya. Pak. Selamat pagi. Ya. Kepada Pak Agus, saya persilakan waktu dan tempatnya, Pak, uh, to deliver your uh, keynote speech for today. Yes, thank you, Frida. Uh, very good morning to everybody. Uh, I would like to uh, deliver a presentation regarding the new strategy, actualization of science, technology, 
and innovation application for economic recovery as an impact of COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, I will uh, give you uh, an outline of my uh, speech uh, first regarding the background and then impacts and then effort to overcome impacts and and then how for the play it rolls and uh, recommendation. As a background, I would like to uh, inform you that uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has had impacts in various aspects. We are focusing on uh, aspect of social and economic. Health crisis, researchers have not found a vaccine yet, needed medicines and medical personnel. The number of infected is more than uh, 23 million people, it's very big. And more than uh, 800,000 people died. Regarding recovery environment, less population, the air, the air is cleaner increase environmental cleanliness, carbon dioxide uh, emission decreased by 17% from 2019 average daily carbon dioxide level. I'm what I would like to talking about the economic aspect. The economy is weakening globally. We know that economic growth slow or decreased sharply. Based on uh, IMF, world economic growth grew negatively by 4.9%. And then economic performance declined sharply. Consumption was disrupted. Investment was hampered. Weak business activities. Indonesia's consumption, for example, pattern fell, fell by 5.02%. And then commodity prices are falling. Example, uh, global oil prices fell about uh, 65%. The WTO predicts a decline in global trade by 2020 is about 13 to 32 percent. If we are talking about the social aspect, a sharp increase of current and unemployment and layoff. And then there is an increasing number of poor people, less social interaction, enhancement of non cash transaction. And then also increase in awareness of clean and healthy lifestyle. The impact on the forestry sector, we know that the COVID-19 pandemic has put heavy pressure on the performance of the forestry business sector, the main export destination countries for Indonesian processed food, namely China, Japan, US.
collaboration. For example, we have a close co collaboration with the C4, Center for International Research. And we have a, a long uh, collaboration and we do a lot of uh, research, development and innovation. And also we have uh, many uh, collaboration with other uh, countries through the bilateral and multilateral uh, cooperation. Yes, thank you. Bagus, thank you so much uh, for your keynote speech and also for a very short discussion. Um, if this is like uh, a real conference, like we are uh, meeting face to face, I would probably ask all the participants to give a big applause uh, for Bagus for giving us a valuable insight uh, in the keynote speech and also the short uh, discussion. They will indeed uh, set the ground for our upcoming discussion with three honorable speakers who are already joining us. Our session to remind you of the agenda. Each speaker will have about uh, 15 minutes to present more or less. And after all three speakers present, we will have a Q&A session where the speakers will answer questions from participants. The questions from participants um, can be submitted uh, via the application called Slido and participants can start submitting their question uh, anytime during presentation. And for those of you who would like uh, to submit question, the event code is 38109. Through Slido, the event code is 38109. And, um, now that everything is said, I would like to say hi to all speakers. The first one is uh, Professor Kenji Umemura. Hello, Professor Kenji. Yeah, hello. Hello, how are you? Selamat pagi. Selamat, Selamat pagi. pagi. Thank you. Selamat pagi. How's uh, Japan and Kyoto? Yeah, today? it's very good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Professor yeah. Kenji Umemura, yes. he is a professor at Research Institute for yeah. Sustainable Humanosphere at Kyoto yes. University. Thank you for joining us. Yes, thank and, you. And uh, the second speaker we have also uh, joining us, Professor Nam Hun Kim. He is the professor at College of Forest and Environmental Science from Kangwon National University in South Korea. Hello, Professor uh, Kim. How are you doing today? Hello. Hi, it's nice. Nice day. Thank you. Thanks for uh, joining us, uh, Professor Kim. And the third speaker is uh, Pak Jamaluddin Malik, Eshut uh, MT PhD. He is the Forest Products Research and Development uh, Center from the uh, Ministry of uh, Forestry. Pak Jamal, selamat pagi, Pak Jamal. Yeah, good morning, Pak Jamal, and thank you for joining us. Okay, without further ado, I would like uh, to just start our uh, discussion session with the speakers where all the speakers will present each for 15 minutes. And I would like uh, to uh, present to you the first speaker, Professor uh, Kenji Umemura from Kyoto University. Professor Kenji will be uh, yep. will not be delivering his presentation live, but you, mm -hmm. I understand you have a recorded uh, video to share with us, yes. right? Yes. yes. Okay. So can I, can I pre do that? Yes, please. Or, okay, just wait. Okay, Professor Kenji will be yeah. presenting strategies for developing wood-based yes. uh, materials. Yeah, just wait, but uh, so the, this is uh, my slide is, uh, okay, then. It's all right? It's all right? Yes. All right.
Okay. Um, are you gonna uh, play a video presentation, yeah. or are we going going to uh, play the video for you? Because I understand you have sent us some materials before. Sorry. It um, are we? I think we are going to to play for you the the video it, it, that you. I have cannot and I cannot hear the uh, your voice. Can you hear me? Um, yes, I can hear you clearly. So, uh, pa Kenji, are you going to uh, Excuse present me. live? I cannot hear the your voice. Um. Okay. Um. I'm so, sorry, so I, I cannot hear your voice. Okay, so in okay, I'm going to ask the uh, the host to to play the video that you have submitted. Okay. Um. So in that case, maybe uh, you can just start your presentation. Hello. Hello. Frida, maybe uh, the community will share the okay. presentation okay. of Professor Umemura. Yeah, okay, it's okay. okay. Now I can hear you. So how should I do that? Oh. Thank you very much, Mr. Pagi. I am Kenji Memura, the professor of the Research Institute for Sustainable Human Sphere, Kyoto University. The first, it is my great pleasure to have the opportunity to give a speech entitled The Strategy for Developing Sustainable Wood-Based Materials. As you know, the wood-based materials are reconstructed materials using fiber, particles, veneer, laminar bonded with adhesives. And the wood-based materials have some advantages. The environmentally friendly materials, the small wood, waste wood, sawdust can be used as raw materials. And the high reliable materials can be produced due to elimination and the dispersion of defect parts such as knot and decay. And the panel materials and the structural composite lumbers can be produced industrially. So the wood based materials are indispensable as materials for architecture and furniture. This figure shows the global production of wood-based panels, that is the plywood, particle board and OSB, and fiber board. The x-axis shows the year from 1995 to 2018, and the y-axis indicates the production. So as you can see that the production of wood-based panels increased 2.9 times over the last 23 years. And it shows that the production is increasing significantly. The total production is 408 million cubic meters in 2018. The each production ratio of plywood, particle board and OSB, and fiber board is the 40%, 31%, and 29% respectively in 2018. This figure shows the global wood-based panel production and its forecast reported in 2009. X-axis shows the year from 1965 to 2013, and Y-axis shows the production. So each color shows the region, such as Africa, Asia and the Pacific, and so on. So this data was published in 2009. Therefore, from 1965 to around 2009, so those values are actual values. But the from around 2009 to 2013, the production is the estimated value. According to the data, wood-based panel production will increase in the future. And the actual production in 2018, shown in the previous slide, is higher than the forecast published in 2009. This increase will be due to the population growth and the economic development in the world. Generally, 
wood-based materials are produced by using wood element and adhesive under a manufacturing condition. Therefore, I think that there are three factors in the production of wood-based materials. There is wood, adhesive, and manufacturing condition. In case of wood, there are some factors, such as the species, density, moisture content, element size, and so on. And in case of adhesive, the type, liquid property, additives, degree of cure are very important. In the manufacturing conditions, the, these factors are important. So in this presentation, so we would like to think about the wood and the adhesive, which are our raw materials. This is the change of the global forest area from 1990 to 2020. 178 million hectares decreased over the last 30 years. The decreasing area is equivalent to the 4.7 times of the area of Japan. And the rate of forest decrease slow in recent years. This is due to the forest preservation and the increase of the plantation forest. However, the forest area is expected to continue to decrease considering the various factors such as deforestation and climate change. This is the recent web news reported in this January. Australia's fires are 46% bigger than the last year's Brazilian Amazon blazes. According to these articles, since September, Bush fires have raised an estimated 25 million acres in Australia. That's an area larger than South Korea and 46% more than the total that burned it in the Brazilian Amazon last year. Hundreds of thousands of people have been forced to evacuate and more than 1 billion animals are feared dead. Drought condition and uh, record-breaking temperature contribute to the fires and preceded uh, scale and intensity. Carbon dioxide the blazes send into the atmosphere contribute to climate change, raising the risk of more large fires in the future. As you know, the forests provide large functions, such as biodiversity conservation function, global environmental preservation function, and so on, in addition to material production function. Therefore, the forest preservation will become more important in the future. Considering that this situation, we need to investigate the utilization of unutilized lignocellulose resources as raw materials for wood-based materials. For example, this is world production of natural fibers used for wood-based materials. The production of straw, including the wheat and rice, is about 1,145 million tons per year. And the production of stocks is 970 million tons per year. The total resources of the plant fiber is 2,283 million tons. On the other hand, the wood is 1,750 million tons. Therefore, it is shown that the potential of these plant fiber is very high. Furthermore, this is the global crops production from 1960 to 2017. Crops include the wheat, rice, corn, sorghum, sugar cane. The production increased linearly like this. The considering the population growth and the economic development, the crops production will increase in the future. But, as you know, that those crops generate the waste such as the straw, stalks, and bagasse. So, uh, we have to deal with the, uh, these waste. To summarize above, the production of wood-based material will increase. The reason is due to the population growth and economic development. However, 
the forest area will continue to decrease due to the deforestation and the forest fires. Therefore, we need to investigate the alternative raw materials for wood-based materials. On the other hand, the crops production will increase and the waste will also increase. But the open burning is prohibited concerning the climate change. Therefore, we need to investigate the utilization of the agricultural waste. The utilization of agricultural waste as raw materials for wood-based materials should be investigated. The wood-based materials consist of wood element and adhesive, so adhesives are indispensable to wood-based materials. The ordinary, the adhesives are synthetic resin adhesive. For example, there are the hormaldehyde-based resin adhesive, the PMDI, epoxy resin adhesive, polyurethane adhesive, and so on. This table shows the raw material of synthetic resin adhesives. As you can see, there are many raw materials, such as the polyvinyl alcohol, vinyl acetate, suchiran, phenol, acrylic acid, MMA, bisphenol A, epichlorohydrin, and so on. And these chemical compounds are derived from hydrocarbons, such as ethylene, propylene, butan butazen cut, aromatic compounds. And these hydrocarbons are derived from naphtha. In case of the hormaldehyde, it is synthesized from natural gas. So the naphtha and natural gas are derived from fossil resources. Therefore, the almost raw material of synthetic resin adhesives are derived from fossil resources. Considering concern about the future global environment and the potential shortage of fossil resources, it is desired to reduce the consumption of synthetic resin. Therefore, we need to replace the synthetic resin adhesive with bio-based adhesive as much as possible. Recently, I checked the research papers regarding the bio-based wood adhesive from 2015 to 2019 using Web of Science. The total of 374 papers are found. The saccharide-based adhesive were 60 papers. The protein-based adhesive were 129 papers. Aromatic-based adhesive, including lignin and tannin, are 107 papers. The oil-based adhesive were 48 papers, and other bio-based adhesive were 30 papers. According to the result, it was found that the research on the protein-based adhesive was popular. Based on the content of their research papers, the conventional development of bio-based wood adhesive can be summarized into four groups. The first is the utilization of natural substances in conventional synthetic resins. For example, the chemical structure of tannin and lignin is similar to phenol. So, instead of phenol, tannin and lignin are used in PF resin. The PF resins containing the tannin and lignin are synthesized. The second is improvement of adhesion performance by chemical modification. For example, the starch and soy protein itself have not the bonding properties. So, some chemical modifications are performed to enhance the reactivity and adhesion performance. The third is improvement of adhesion performance by adding synthetic compound. As a typical example, the addition of isoanate resin is known. The fourth is the combination of one to three. However, these methods have some problems, such as a complicated preparation, high dependence on fossil resources, and low adhesiveness, especially low water resistance. So we have to develop the new bio-based adhesive having simple preparation, low dependence on fossil resources, and high adhesiveness. 
Anyhow, the biofuels would have less would be important in the future. Conventional wood-based materials consist of wood and the synthetic resin adhesive. But considering the wood and the fossil resources, the investigation of unutilized lignol cellulose like agricultural waste and bio-based adhesive is desired. The here, I would like to introduce a recent project named the Satreps. In this project, we are in charge of the utilization of Swiss organ bagas as raw material of particle board. The Swiss organ has planted in large area as a multi purpose plant for food the chemical agent. But the large amount of bagas is generated as a waste. The conventionally, the bagas is used as a silage, but this utilization is short term carbon stock. So we investigate the possibility of bagas utilization for raw material or particle board. This is the manufacture method of particle board. So in this case, we use the citric acid and sucrose as a bio-based adhesive. That is, the citric acid and sucrose are dissolved in the water, and the solution was used as an adhesive. The solution was sprayed onto the sorghum bagas particles and mat was formed. The mat was hot pressed and then the sorghum bagas particle board bonded with citric acid and sucrose was obtained. These are some results. The table one shows the wood screw holding power, MOR, and the thickness swelling of particle board bonded with citric acid citric acid and sucrose, and PF resin. The value of wood screw holding power of using citric acid and sucrose was 525 Newton. This value was higher than that of the board bonded with citric acid only, but the lower than the board bonded with PF resin. The MOR value of using the citric acid and sucrose was similar to that of the PF resin. And the thickness swelling of the board bonded with the citric acid and sucrose was comparable to the JIS standard. The table 2 shows the formaldehyde emission of each board. As you can see that, that we didn't detect the formaldehyde emission in respect of the board. So it was found that the sorghum bagas particle board bonded with citric acid and sucrose had good mechanical and physical property. This table shows the termite and the decay resistances of particle board bonded with citric acid and sucrose, PF resin, and PMDI. The basically, there is a concern about the biological durability of particle board bonded with bio-based adhesive. Therefore, we investigate these properties. The value of termite mortality and mass loss in termite resistance were similar to those of the board bonded with PF resin and PMDI. In addition, the values of brown water fungus and white water fungus in decay resistance were also similar to those of the board bonded with PF resin and PMDI. So, it was clarified that the board bonded with citric acid and sucrose had good biological durability. The based on the result, the particle board using agricultural waste and the bio-based adhesive have high potential. I would like to summarize this presentation. Considering the sustainable wood-based materials, unutilized lignol cellulose, such as agricultural waste and grass plants, should be used in addition to wood. And the bio-based adhesive should be used. But in this case, it is better not to use their toxic and harmful substances drawn from fossil resources as much as possible. And if we can establish the manufacturing technology using these materials, we can obtain sustainable wood-based materials. With this, I conclude my presentation. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Terima kasih.
Okay, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you, uh, Professor Kenji Umemura. We will yeah. come back to you later in the yeah. Q&A session okay. to answer okay. some questions from the participants. Yeah. Thanks again. Yeah. Yeah. And um, we will move on to the speaker number two, um, Professor Nam Hun Kim. is a teaching professor at Tangwon National uh, University at the College of Forest and Environmental uh, Science. Uh, Professor Kim will talk about wood quality evaluation of compression, lateral, and opposite uh, wood. And I understand Professor Kim also have uh, submitted a video of his presentation, and uh, the committee will play the video for us now. Okay, thank you, Frida. I use uh, video. Thank you. We'll come back to you later after the video. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is Nam Hun Kim, uh, working at Gangwon National University, Korea. Uh, I'm very happy and great honor to deliver a keynote speech in this wonderful the 12th International Symposium of IWAS. I would like to express my sincere appreciation to Dr. Fauji Fabrianto, President of Indonesian Wood Research Society, and organizing committee of this symposium, and all members of Indonesian Wood Research Society for their kind invitation. Today, I would like to talk about uh, wood quality evaluation of compression, lateral, and opposite wood. This is my profile. My Gangwon National University is located in Chuncheon City, here. It is uh, east side from Seoul about 100 kilometers. Uh, this is the uh, main campus among three campuses. I think these three books, these three books are so valuable materials for understanding reaction mode. As you may know very well, reaction mode on the lower sides of branch and leaning stem of conifers, also known as compression wood, has the function to restore the vertical growth of stem or branch and could be recognized by the darkened color on the transfer surface. Compression wood, lateral wood, and opposite wood. Generally, compression wood has distinctively different seeds in anatomical, chemical, physical, and mechanical properties. So it is uh, considered a uh, defect in industry, that is, on desirable material for commercial utilization. They are the list of major studies on wood quality of compression rather than opposite wood. Many scientists studied CW and OW, except LW, and they used branch wood as a material. Recently, in our lab, we are focusing on the comparison of the properties among compression wood, lateral wood, and opposite wood. So uh, now, I'm going to talk with our recent publications. First of all, I would like to talk about characteristics of compression wood, lateral wood, and opposite wood 
in the stem wood of Ginkgo biloba and the Pinostens flora. This is a sample uh, for Ginkgo biloba and the Pinostens flora. In these photos, you can see the uh, transition from early wood to late wood. In lateral wood, uh, you can see the gradual transition from early wood to late wood. In figure three, uh, we can see a duos crystal in all samples and uh, there are many intercellular spaces in CW compared to LW and OW. In figure four, uh, we can see the cross field pit. In CW, uh, the uh, slip like pit, PCOID pit, and uh, spiral checks. But in LW, OW, we can see cup resoid pit, cup resoid pit. In CW, we can see a uh, distorted arrangement of trachyid in all youth. However, in LW, OW, you can see regular arrangement of trachyid. In a uh, tangential section, rays are primarily unidirectional with few bijuriate rays. CW has uh, a branched uh, trachyl tips. So, and uh, uh, as shown in table one, CW showed the shortest trachyl legs, while LW and OW showed similar trachyl legs. Table to show lay height and lay number. Here, CW showed the highest lay height and the lowest lay number, while LW and OW had no significant difference. Lay height increased with age, however, lay number decreased with increasing growth link number. Table 3 shows microfiber angle in CW, LW, and OW of Ginkgo biloba. CW had the highest uh, microfiber angle This is the same tendons in Korean red pine. And microfiber angle showed uh, some radial variation from piece to bar. That is, microfiber angle decreased from pitch to bar. Table of five shows crystalline characteristics, relative crystallinity and crystal width. Especially, CW showed the lowest uh, crystallinity in every uh, growth length. This is also same tendons with uh, in Korean red pine. 
видит Кинку Белова. Relative Christianity shows some um, variation pattern, radial, radial variation pattern. However, uh, Christianity reads did not show any change. from peace to bar. In FTIR spectral analysis, there are some differences in wiggling and carbohydrate peaks between CW and LW and OW. In conclusion, from our studies, it is revealed or confirmed that the CW, LW, and OW in the stemmoid from both species had distinctive anatomical properties, crystalline characteristics, and chemical composition. Now, I'm going to move to cross-field pitting characteristics of compression lateral and opposite wood. This is a cross-field of CW and LW and OW. In these figures, we can see a piecewood pit Piscioid pit in CW, compressoid pit in LW and OW. And also, we found a compressoid pit in CW and pinoid pit and window like pit in at LW and window like pit and pinoid pit in OW. Table 1 shows pin number per cross field of CW, LW, of OW in the stem wood of Ginkgo below. CW showed uh, the Lost number, lost pin number per cross field compared to LW and OW. This figure shows uh, frequencies of pin number per cross field of CW, LW, OW in every uh, cross rings. Table Two uh, shows pin number per cross field per CW, LW, and OW in uh, pinus dense flora and uh, the frequencies. It is uh, almost uh, similar tendency with Ginkgo biloba. Table 3 shows cross field pit diameter of CW, LW, and OW in pinus dense flora. As you can see here, CW showed the smallest uh, pit diameter compared to LW and OW. This table shows uh, radial track height diameter of CW, LW, OW of pinus dense flora. CW had the smallest uh, radial track height diameter compared to LW and OW. In conclusion, the cross field pitting characteristics such as cross-field pitting type 
pin number per cross field, cross field fitting diameter and radial tachy diameter could be used to identify the reaction wood in the stem wood of ginkgo biloba and the pinus dense flora. I'm going to introduce on physical and mechanical properties of reaction wood of tropical soft wood species. They are sample wood discs of Sumatran pine and agadis. Table 1 shows the physical properties of reaction wood. CW showed the highest green density, oven drying de density, and the lowest green moisture content in both species. Also, CW showed the lowest volumetric shrinkage with the highest actual shrinkage in both species. In Table 2, CW had the highest compressive and shear strength in Sumatran pine, while in Agadis, OW had comparable value with CW. In conclusion, compression of smart pine had distinctively different physical and mechanical properties compared with lateral wood and opposite wood. While in Agadis, the mechanical properties were similar in CW LW and OW. We move to carbonization of reaction wood. Table 1 shows the heating values of compression wood, lateral wood, and opposite wood in dense flora. CW uh, had the highest heating value. Table to show the pH of CW, LW, and OW in Pinostange flora. There are some differences in pH among the samples. Table three shows the child of CW, LW, and OW from Pinot Stench Flora. CW showed the highest yield compared to other parts. In conclusion, CW had higher heating value and child than LW and OW. Also, uh, reaction wood is considered as a defect for utilization. It must be a great potential for utilization as biochar. I would like to finish my talk with the wise saying of Frank Lloyd Wright in 1928. We may use wood with intelligence only if we understand wood. Finally, I would like to give my sincere thanks to my student, Mr. Piantar Dasan Prusatama and Dr. Jie uh, and Professor Fauci Fabrianto and uh, all members of my lab in KNU. Fauji Febriangto, uh, Biantara Dasan Prusatama, and uh, Dr. Jie. Thank you for your kind attention. Terima kasih. 
atas perhatian Anda. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Please take care from COVID-19. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in the International Symposium of I was again by Okay, please don't say goodbye first because uh, we will still uh, be meeting with you, uh, Professor Kim, later in the Q&A uh, session. So please uh, stay on with us and thank you for the uh, video presentation. And moving on to the third uh, speaker, we have uh, Pak Jamaluddin uh, Malik. Uh, let me just brief you on his background. Uh, currently, Pak Jamaluddin Malik is a research scientist in Forest Products Processing at Forest Products Research and Development Center uh, at the Ministry of Forestry and uh, Environment. Pak Jamal has been with the ministry since 1998 until uh, today, and he holds a PhD degree from the University of uh, Melbourne. Uh, Pak Jamaluddin, uh, I believe you're still with us, and Pak Jamaluddin will be presenting live uh, he will be presenting about quote unquote new wood from impregnated J bond using polymerized merbau wood extractive. Pak Jamal, uh, saya persilakan untuk memulai presentasinya silakan. Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone. After listening to previous presentation. Uh, the talk more general, particularly from Gigi of Cordia and from Professor Kenji. Now, so we go to my topic today. Uh, conclusion. Uh, not in other countries, Labula in Kelampayan in Malaysia, in Mao in Myanmar, and Krakow in Thailand. Why Jabon? Uh, this species is promising wood for high quality product because it has a good economic potency and geographically it has a wide range of distribution being easy to cultivate. High university, not less and easy to work. Next, unfortunately, it has under undesired properties because it is low density, low strain, and low dimension stability, and also susceptibility to biological attack. So, it is an undesirable species and belong to grade four to five. Uh, according to Martha Vijay et al. 1989. Next. Why Mubak Saktip? Uh, Mubak Saktip is uh, many researchers, many people uh, presume uh, Mubak Saktip is a problematic material in some application of marble wood or in marble in industry. But uh, in our research, uh, I found that uh, the liquid of Mubak Saktip can be reacted with formaldehyde to form adhesive and started in exterior type of wood adhesive. 
so I grab one important finding here, uh, namely uh, change to uh, I change the hydrophobic uh, properties to hydrophobic uh, ones uh, of marble extractive properties. Here in my research uh, started in 2009. Uh, that important finding is marble extractive content so you know, and then 2010 until 2011, uh, I and my college uh, formulate more extractive as adhesive, as bioadhesive. And then I continue my research and found that that is a promising impregnating material that uh, conducted since 2015. Uh, here, the type of uh, polymer uh, extractive form. Uh, from here, I select, I got two, only two proper uh, polymerase more extractive. Uh, actually, this uh, process is more properly called as modification panel cresting uh, with the effort of reducing resonal content uh, according to Dunkey and VC 2002. Next. Yeah, based on uh, some analysis such as FTIR, spectra, uh, DSG analysis, and TGA analysis, we can see that uh, uh, from FTIR spectra, uh, the polymerase marble extractive or PME uh, has a lower uh, hydrox hydroxyl uh, groups. So this is why uh, it's uh, has a hydrophobic, hydrophobic uh, characteristic. And from the SC analysis, we can see the uh, transition glass uh, temperature. And from TGA analysis, we can know that uh, PME or, uh, 22 and PMB 32, 33 uh, has a higher uh, or better uh, decomposition temperature. Next. Yeah, based on crystallinity and molecular weight, we can see that uh, the polymeric uh, material, namely PME double two and PME double three, uh, has crystallinity eight point seven percent for PME double two and ten percent for PME double three, and about uh, three thousand uh, molecular weight. So the lower crystallinity would make the polymeric material penetrate wood structure easily when they are used in impregnation treatment. Next. Here the illustration how the application of MPME on jabon wood. Uh, in vessel or a cylinder, we put a sample or wood and then vacuum and filling the cylinder with PME and uh, put a uh, certain pressure uh, for certain duration. And after that, in the in final uh, step, we can have modified jabun wood with uh, different, here we, we can see very different color from uh, initial sample. Next. Here the process, another process when, if we need to uh, do another treatment, for example, hot pressing, we can uh, close or uh, open system. Here, I clo uh, use close uh, system uh, for uh, additional treatment to improve uh, the timber, jabon timber uh, properties. Uh, this is the result of uh, treatment. Then the basic one of the result is uh, density. We can see from the graph that that the uh, jabon timber increased density by 25% if implicated by uh, PME double two and about 30% when using PME double three. Next. Here, uh, uh, the visual appearance of untreated and treated wood using PME. Uh, if I ask you, what the species, uh, the cream color of timber? 
or uh, wood technologies or anatomies can answer easily that it is jabon but when i answer you what the two another what others one other two uh, one the reddish brown ones t1 and t2 it is jabon or it is possible jabon based on the color is it uh, merbau maybe but uh, let's see the next slide what happened uh, this is the uh, color change evaluation there are uh, some uh, system to evaluate the, the color the simple one is i got from it is free uh, online uh, evaluation color from color hexa thanks for color hexa uh, the impregnating uh, material uh, imprinted the uh, jabon timber uh, using pme double two the color uh, change from uh, very soft orange to dark uh, moderate red. Next. Here, uh, uh, more common uh, used evaluation on color change, uh, Sci lab parameters. Uh, here, uh, the table show that uh, the average value of Sci lab parameter by section on any impregnating material on off untraceable skadamba or jabon wood. Uh, next. Yeah, the change of value, color value using Sile parameter between treated and untreated wood of Antisipalus kadamba. Next, here yeah, the more visual uh, sample. I compared uh, untreated uh, sample with T1 that is uh, impregnated by PME double two and UT untreated compared to. T, T, T2, that is sample completed, impregnated with uh, PMB double T, and we, I also compared uh, between uh, T1 and T2. So, uh, more polygonal appearance, we can show that we can see that uh, from the figure, we can see that the control that is not happen there, but in uh, Sample, uh, impregnated sample using uh, both with, uh, PME double two and PME double T, we can see that there is deposit once in uh, uh, cell wall uh, because uh, PME not only precipitate in a surface but also penetrate into the cell wall. Uh, so uh, from here we can see as well that. Uh, PME double three uh, deposit more higher than uh, PME double two. Next, this uh, again uh, FTIR analysis for uh, impregnated uh, jabon wood. Here we can see that there is a functional group that not exists in untreated or can control uh, jabon wood. Next. Yes, is uh, illustration of reaction between wood and PMA during impregnation process. The hydrophilic of hydroxyl groups are replaced by more hydrophobic methyl groups uh, from PME through methylation. Next, here yeah, the effect of impregnation to uh, some mechanical properties. Here we can see that the hardness. Uh, both and inside hardness increase significant after uh, treatment by uh, using uh, polymerized uh, marble extractive PME double two and PME double three. Next, here. Uh, oh, sorry. Here, the, uh, here is share increment of uh, polymerized marble extractive applied on a jabon timber so in four right four grab uh, the increment we can see that uh, the share increase after uh, the treatment next here uh, the value of MOE MMOR uh, also in there is improvement in uh, 
mechanical properties uh, after uh, impregnating uh, statement. Here's a, a crystallinity value of uh, timber, jabon timber after uh, the treatment. We can see that uh, the crystallinity increase uh, 40, say 38 percent for PME double two and uh, 50 percent, 50 point eight percent when uh, jabon wood uh, in uh, impregnated by uh, PME double uh, three. Uh, here when uh, we do another uh, treatment, additional treatment after impregnation, for example, hot compression, we can uh, reach uh, outstanding uh, density. Here in uh, PME double two, the and the uh, compression temperature 140, the density increase one, 117 percent, while uh, when using PME double three, the and the the best temperature is uh, 150. The density improve until 138.7 percentage. Here is the uh, an, I think is good information because. Uh, wood and uh, water is a problem of uh, basic problem of, uh, in, in timber uh, science and technology. Uh, with this statement, we can see that a uh, set of recovery or uh, spring back is only 14 percent when we use uh, PME double three uh, when uh, and uh, the temperature of compression. 150 uh, degrees Celsius. Uh, here again, the, uh, just the graph from uh, previous slide. Uh, theoretically, but uh, uh, redu reduction in the set of recovery is due to the structure chain of wood component uh, and potential cross linking in uh, the wall for uh, the wall polymer. And in this study, the reduction in set of recovery for the jabon wood sample is presumed to be caused mainly due to the effect of the impregnating material that contain cross-linking compound. Uh, for the next slide, six, I think next six slides, I will talk about the effect of uh, impregnating treatment to uh, durability of uh, timber. I prepare uh, six, one, two, yeah, a two p uh, uh, sample with different uh, treatment from untreated sample or control, and then uh, some impregnated using marble extractor only, uh, impregnated using uh, PME with a cyclic process, and then. Uh, not, uh, other treatment uh, impregnating combined with uh, hot compression. And here the, uh, we expose the sample to types of uh, termites, subterranean termites and dry wood uh, termites. Next, here, uh, sample exposed to subterranean termites and next, yeah, dry wood termites. And, uh, we can see that uh, treatment is effective to prevent wood from uh, termite attack. And we can see that uh, the best uh, treatment is next uh, G, uh, uh, recommended to uh, prevent jabon wood against subterranean termite attack. And then uh, treatment G, uh, treatment J, uh, is recommended to prevent jabon wood against uh, dry wood uh, termites attack. Next, yeah. Sorry, it is not uh, G but J. The treatment of J is recommended to prevent jabon wood against dry wood termite attack. So the conclusion is, uh, I can say that the uh, 
there is significant improvement in physical and mechanical properties of jabon wood after impregnation treatment using polymerase marble extractive PME. Uh, the resistance of wood against subterranean and dry wood termite attack were also improved. This research comes provide opportunities to growers and users of jabon wood by demonstrating that this low density, fast growing species can be potentially utilized to produce high value wood product through a simple impregnating treatment using natural and environmentally friendly material from waste of verbo wood. Here yeah, the uh, reference. I pub uh, published uh, uh, some of my research uh, here. We can see, you can access the journal as I published uh, uh, previously. Okay, uh, thank you from your kind attention. Thank you, Pak Jamaluddin Malik. Uh, <coughs> okay, um, we all have uh, heard from Pak Jamaluddin Malik that uh, no there voice is actually a new wood from impregnated jabon using polymerized murbao wood extracted. And um, now I'm sure all the participants are um, curious and want to ask some questions to uh, the speakers. And we have actually gathered a few questions and we have selected um we have selected a few questions that we will uh, be asking to the speakers but first of all i would uh, say hi to professor kenji and professor nam hun kim um professor kenji and professor nam are you still yeah. with us yeah okay uh professor kenji i yes. was uh, i was uh, watching you in the presentation, mm -hmm. uh, there's a slide on global wood-based panel production, and I'm just uh, wondering uh, mm -hmm. why is Asia is actually leading in global wood-based panel production? What is what? Sorry. What is uh, why is Asia? Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, the connection is bad. In sorry. The American countries, uh, the global wood-based panel should be. Mm. Sorry, the connection is very bad. So the once of once again, please. Okay. Um. Can you hear me clearly? Yeah. Yes. 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 Professor please. Kenji. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'm just wondering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Why Asia is uh, leading in mm -hmm. global wood-based panel production? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think the. Yeah, the, the most important is the uh, amount of the resources. So the, as you know, the, uh, mm -hmm. the as you say, the, the amount of the resources in the Asia is uh, very much. That's why, so I think the, especially the Indonesia also, they have uh, mm, much uh, lignoterous resources. So the, I think yes. it is very important. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and um, we have a question from <coughs> one of the participants. Um, he's asking that reconstructed materials mm -hmm. using fiber, particles, yeah. veneer, lamina, mm -hmm. bonded with adhesives, yeah. has been developed in the last century, starting mm -hmm. from the simple multiplying of tea box uh, mm -hmm. here in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Well, current challenge, for mm. reconstructed material is mm. anti-fire material and uh -huh. low swelling and mm -hmm. also shrinkage properties as well as mm -hmm. panel emission from the adhesive. Mm. Is there yeah. any research focus to solve that challenge? Uh, as to the uh, bio-based adhesive? Current challenge that we are facing now is for reconstructed material, yeah. the anti-fire and yes, also yes, yes. low swelling and mm. uh, shrinkage property as yes, well yes, yes. as panel emission from yeah. the adhesive. Yes. Is there any research that mm. is focused to solve that challenge? Yeah, of course. They using the uh, synthetic resin adhesive. So those uh, the research. There are many researches mm -hmm. about that. But at least the in case of the using the uh, bio based adhesive, there are the almost no researches until now. Mm. 
Okay. Um, is there any uh, reason why there is not mm. any research on that? Yeah. So the reason is that the uh, research on the bio based adhesive is the mm, how do you say the the research is very research period is very long, but mm. the uh, quality meaning the vulnerability of the bio based adhesive have the problems. That's why. So the Im now the uh, most important on the uh, research of the bio based adhesive is to uh, get to obtain the uh, good vulnerability especially the water resistance. That's why, so the after getting the uh, those uh, good uh, vulnerability, so the next step, so the those uh, research will be uh, produced. That is okay. my opinion. Okay, uh, well, one more to Professor Kenji. Nowadays, yes. uh, yeah. various lignocellulosic materials mm -hmm. are available in nature. Yeah. Is it possible to mix the low density of lignocellulosic materials with mm -hmm. those of high density materials? Ah, yes. For example, the the low low density uh, lignocellulose mean they are basically low quality uh, lignocellulose. But uh, the manufacturer, if we how to say the uh, develop the uh, good uh, manufacturing conditions, so the we will get the uh, uh, good wood-based materials using the low uh, density of wood. Okay, thanks, uh, Professor Kenji. Now I would like yeah. to uh, say hi to Professor Nam Hun Kim. Uh, Professor Kim, um, we have a question for you uh, from the participants. It is interesting to understand the properties of compression wood. It is different between soft wood and also hard wood. However, how significant is this compression wood to the timber trade? Mm, yes. Uh, actually, uh, there are, you, as you may know, uh, compression is a good is. Uh, serious detector for utilization uh, commercially. And so uh, <coughs> we should uh, uh, reduce the uh, compression wood for commercial purpose. Uh, is it right for your answer? Uh, OK. Um, I? <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, Professor Kim, I'm just, uh, I'm not representing any of the participants, but uh, this question is uh, from myself. I'm just wondering, um, can you tell us the background of your uh, study on uh, the compression wood, LW and also OW? What made you finally decide to do a study uh, on them? Maybe you can share it with us. Mm. Yeah, nowadays we are focusing on the Compression wood. Uh, uh, it is uh, really uh, a serious detector for utilization. So, and uh, in one stand, uh, there are uh, compression wood, uh, lateral wood, and opposite wood uh, uh, in one stand. Uh, it is a uh, uh, I, my study is uh, has two objectives. One is uh, scientific purpose, and uh, the other one is the practical uh, purpose. So now, uh, in my study, this is really uh, related uh, related with the scientific uh, purpose. Okay, thank you, Professor uh, Kim, for your <laughs> answer. <laughs> I would like to ask the the, the next question to uh, Pak Jamal. Uh, Pak Jamal, uh, a, one of the participants is asking. Um, but before, um, let, let me just uh, give you a brief background of the question. 
one of the characteristics that was uh, evaluated in impregnated Jebon wood is the wood color. The wood color was observed from timber surfaces from the same finest. However, cellular wood creates non-uniform surfaces, while the CIE lab system measurement relies on light sources reflection of the wood surface. To cope with uneven surface, some researchers measure the wood color from sawdust with similar particle sizes in mesh. Um, to what extent the color measurement from solid surface is valid for measurement? Yeah, I, I do my uh, investigation or observation on uh, wood, solid wood of Jabon. So I, I evaluate the, the surface, not on uh, small, uh, on solid wood. So I compare the original or counter Jabon wood compared to uh, impregnated ones. Then uh, I use a silab system because it's uh, more common use in. Okay. Yeah. Is there audio? Hello, Pak Jamal. Yeah. Okay. All right, Pak Jamal. Uh, one parameter to test the modified wood is the anti-shrink efficiency, atau uh, yang kita sebut ASE ya, ASE. Yeah. It represents the dimensional stability of impregnated and non-impregnated wood. In this study, the ASE is not tested. How do you test the dimensional stability of impregnated wood? Yeah. <laughs> There uh, as, as a method to evaluate the uh, dimensional stability. Uh, I use uh, the simple one is uh, just measure the uh, set set of recovery or uh, spring to measure how how much uh, the uh, uh, same swelling uh, and, and uh, Expressed in percentage. Okay. Uh, set of fourteen percent of uh, spring back or set of recovery. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Pak Jamal. Uh, the laboratory scale test to test a modified wood against termites uh, is useful. Uh, however, do you, how do you link with the real situation in surface, such as a graveyard test? Uh, graveyard test, but uh, uh, wood, wood use is, it depends on what for. Uh, what uh, the timber or wood uh, will, will, use, will be used. In here, uh, uh, study, uh, the purpose, the goal of my, uh, of my uh, treatment is how to utilize uh, jabon wood uh, become uh, flooring and uh, as a housing uh, component furniture. But if we uh, use the jabon or treated jabon timber outside, for uh, example, uh, so we, we should uh, do a graveyard test. That's all. Okay, makasih yeah. Pak Jamal. Sama-sama, uh, thank, thank you. I'd like to uh, to forward this following question to Pak uh, Professor, I mean Professor Kenji Umemura. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, Professor Kenji, uh, yes. one of the participants, Pak mm -hmm. Ihak Sumardi, is asking, Many technologies can be used. Uh, many technologies can use uh, fiber from agricultural waste to make materials. Mm -hmm. The problem is on the industrial scale. Mm -hmm. Are there any example of the mm -hmm. industry that use agricultural waste? Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. yeah. So the, as far as I know, in the China, the their their company manufacture the board using the. Uh, 
uh, wheat. Ra ra right? Uh, yeah, wheat. But uh, the at least the uh, how do you say amount of the manufacture is uh, not so much. Mm. But and then so the when we use the uh, those uh, agricultural waste, the uh, vulnerability is uh, very important. That's why. So the in that case, uh, may the many how to say company uh, you have to be have to use the uh, high quality adhesive. Mm. Are you saying that the agricultural waste does not yeah. uh, contain uh, the the doesn't con, con it's not a very good material for adhesive? Yeah, but uh, yeah, but if we use the uh, very how to say the good adhesive, so the we can manufacture the good quality bone from the agricultural okay. waste. Okay, um, I'll move forward to the next question still. Uh, this question is for Professor Kenji. Yeah. Uh, one of the participants, uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Muhammad Adli Lubis, is asking, mm -hmm. how about the feasibility of bio-based adhesives mm -hmm. for industrial application, especially the cost analysis? Yeah. Is that feasible? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, in the actually in Japan, so the, some company, adhesives company, it try to use the uh, lignos, uh, sorry, the uh, lignin-based uh, adhesives. But uh, now is the uh, trying. But okay. in the Euro Europe, so the some company use the uh, uh, lignin-based adhesive, as far as I know. Uh, how about the the pricing uh, scheme? Uh, is is it is it uh, is it a good price to uh, to use that yeah so the company said to me the uh, price is the similar to that of the uh, conventional uh, synthetic resin adhesive okay so the cost is uh, is yeah. just yeah? yeah okay now i would like to forward the following question to pak jamaluddin malik um the question is from pak muhammad adi lubis as well uh pak jamaluddin malik uh, how did you justify whether the cured PME was in the cell wall or not? FESEM only showed the images, not the chemical compounds of cured PME. Yeah, uh, just on same uh, analysis, uh, we can see that uh, uh, PME, both PMW2 and PMW3, was deposited in uh, cell wall. And uh, it based on FEIR analysis, we can see as well that the, uh, there is a reaction between PME and uh, wood. So uh, based on this uh, based the analysis, uh, we can conclude that uh, there is a change uh, permanently, the, the timber, uh, impregnated timber of Jabon changed permanently, not only uh, peel uh, in the vessel, uh, just a bulky material, but also reacted with uh, cell wall. Okay, uh, thank you, Pak Jamal. And I would like oh, to ask Professor Kim now. Uh, we have a question from Wahyu Duyanto. Professor Kim, do we find uh, the compression phenomena in bamboos? Bamboo. Bamboo, do, do, yes. Do, do you hear me? Yes, I Bam can hear you clearly. Uh, in bamboo, yeah. Mm. No, no, I don't have experience on bamboo, but uh, maybe, maybe there are you, you can find some uh, compression and maybe reaction in bamboo. Maybe you can find. Hmm. Okay, so you have not uh, really done any study uh, yes, none yet. on bamboos. Mm -hmm. Okay, Related thank you. Hmm. Okay, well, uh, maybe you can answer this following question from a participant. Her name is Ratih Damayanti, uh, Professor Kim. 
uh, among LW and OW, which one showed the most normal characters? Uh, okay, that's very uh, good question. Our, our goal uh, of our study is, uh, is uh, to solve uh, the questions, uh, one objective of our study. Yes, uh, lateral wood is uh, uh, transition type from uh, between compression and uh, opposite wood. So, uh, but but uh, it's uh, near to opposite wood, not compression in anatomical and some physical mechanical properties. Okay. Okay. Uh, thanks, Professor Kim. And now, I, now I would like to go to Pak Jamaluddin Malik again. Uh, Pak Jamal, there's a question from Yaman uh, Mustara. Uh, he's asking, what kind of polymers were formed by Merkel extract, and how a non-structural component extractive formed a cross-linked with structural component? Uh, sorry, the signal problem. I think, but. Uh, uh, the component of uh, marble extract is so small. So, uh, I mean, uh, this uh, major of marble extract is so small. Finding, uh, we can uh, resin, resin or polymeric resin. Uh, here, so I apply uh, this uh, polymeric material for impregnating, impregnating uh, material uh, to improve the quality or properties of wood. And uh, the I uh, here in my study, I didn't uh, uh, do research on the structure of uh, the polymer because I think it's too, too far from the, the study with limitation uh, uh, time. I think we can uh, do uh, uh, further research on uh, the structure on uh, uh, polymer uh, structure. So what kind of polymers were actually formed by Merbau extract? Yeah, yeah, this is, uh, um, uh, I call bio uh, polymer because uh, this is uh, come from uh, uh, wood extracted, wood uh, marble extract. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Professor uh, Kenju Memura, uh, there yes. is a question from Nevi Veniriantin, one of the mm -hmm. participants. Okay. Um, the question is, is there any influence between adhesive and fungal growth on plywood and how to avoid it? Oh, that is a very <laughs> difficult question. But at least the uh, yeah, detailed mechanism, I still don't know the detailed mechanism. That's why so the, I compare with the uh, uh, synthetic resin adhesive. And then so the, we decided the uh, effect of the, those uh, properties. Is there any way to avoid uh, the fungal? Avoid? So uh, oh, sorry, Fungal I still don't know. Plywood. Okay, all right. Yeah. So, okay. Um, now I would like to go back to Pak Jamaluddin Malik again. There's another question from the participant, Pak Yaniko Hadi Prayogo. Pak uh, Jamal, yep. uh, Pak Yaniko is asking, extract will consist of many compounds. Has it been identified which compound that is responsible for the wood movement on the wood properties? Yes, exactly. It's true that uh, the extract is uh, contains so many uh, materials, so many compounds there. Uh, uh, but here, I just uh, grab the, the major of the compound. It's, uh, here in uh, wood, uh, marble wood extract, uh, the major content is um, uh, resolucinol. Uh, uh, and 
in application for adhesive, for example, and uh, impregnated material, we don't need to make a purification uh, because just just apply the just uh, made uh, extract, uh, for, uh, for example, in uh, uh, in form of uh, liquid. Uh, so. Uh, then uh, add more additional material mm -hmm. so we can uh, make polymerization process there. So we don't need to uh, purify here. But if we want to do, it, we can, I think. Okay, Pak Jamal, another question. Yep. Uh, what is the resources of PME? Resources? Yes, is it, uh, is it from wood waste? Oh, yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh, we know that uh, sawmill or wood processing industry, the side uh, product is unknown. What product is the waste is, uh, for example, uh, sawdust and cut off and so on. So we can uh, take the sawdust and cut off and extract the, the material from there easily. After okay. that, uh, we, uh, I made a, a process uh, with another compound, another material. So we get the PM. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Compared compared to uh, bark. Yeah. Okay. Wood compared to bark, uh, which waste is more potential uh, to PM? Oh, yeah. In verbal case, I think uh, wood more potential than the bark. I mean. Uh, the bark. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, even though we have some difficulties in 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 the audio with Pak Jamal, but I think we we all can can generally hear what you were saying. And I think that is the last question from the participant. And once again, I would like uh, to thank all the speakers for joining us in uh, this conference. But before. Uh, we close this session. I would like to just give uh, us and all the participants a very brief summary of uh, what all three speakers uh, was presenting earlier. I will start with the presentation of Professor Kenji Umemura. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor Kenji is, uh, is saying that forest multifunction consists of multi-production of wood and that is why Forest preservation is important. Introducing wood-based materials, uh, utilization of unutilized uh, lignocellulose resources and bio-based adhesives will be important because wood-based materials have high potential as they are indispensable um, in, for architecture and also furniture and especially with the population growth, uh, the need is uh, also growing. And uh, the second presentation uh, is by Professor Nam Hun Kim. Um, Professor Kim did a study on compression, lateral and opposite wood in the stem wood of Ginkgo biloba and also Korean uh, red pine. And Professor Kim also did a study from the Sumatran uh, pine and agathis. And from the study, he concludes that uh, compression wood, lateral wood, and opposite wood mostly have properties uh, that are distinct. Uh, however, compression wood, which is usually considered as defect and undesirable by the industry, actually uh, had higher heating value and char yield than um, lateral and opposite wood. And therefore, uh, compression wood has great potential for utilization as biochar fall and it is actually good material for bioenergy. And the third presentation is from Pak Jamaluddin Malik. Um, his study shows that jabon wood is significantly improved in physical and uh, mechanical uh, properties after impregnation treatment using polymerized uh, merbau uh, extractives or PME. And uh, why is merbau extractive? Because it is unwanted part of the merbau wood, therefore can reduce waste from uh, the merbau wood. 
the resistance of the new wood against termite attacks uh, were also uh, improved. And um, those are the presentations that uh, we had for today's se uh, session. I would like to say thank you again to all three speakers, Professor Kenji Umemura in Kyoto University, and also Professor Nam Hun Kim uh, from Kangwon National University and Pak Jamaluddin uh, Malik from the Ministry of Environment and uh, Forestry. Thank you so much. And um, we hope that this session gives us a very valuable insight. Um, and I would like to give back uh, the following agenda to our uh, MC, Mbak Rossi. Okay. Uh... Okay, thank you Mbak Frida. It's really good to have you here as our moderator. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are entering the next session, which is the parallel session. And in this parallel session, you can get yourself involved in a more in-depth discussions. But before, before you're joining the parallel session, you need to leave the plenary Zoom meeting and then log in back to the special Zoom meeting room that have been designated for the parallel session. So without further ado, see you on the parallel session.